In this video, I'm showing you two simple modifications to the ANIT A8 3D printer that will make bad leveling much, much easier. Stay tuned! Hello, my name is Daniel. Welcome to the Crosslink channel. On this channel, I post videos about 3D printing, gadget reviews and more. Today, we're going to take care about the process of manual bed leveling and how to make it easier with just two simple modifications. So let's start right into it. The first modification are these spring bushings. Um, the spring bushings are simple modification. You just put your spring uh, into this bushing and then install it between the print bed and the slider. It keeps the spring in place and so reduces the, yeah, the movements in any direction of the heat bed during the leveling process and also during the print process. And the second upgrade, which is the most important one, is this turnable knob, which is um, basically turning the wing nut. Um, so if you remember how we did the first um, print bed leveling in my video, which is linked up here, which was the initial installation, if you're already printing the first layer, um, turning the wing nut, either underneath the print bed or using the screwdriver from on top of the print bed can be quite difficult. So you might have to pause the print or you can't even turn anything. So after printing all the parts, by the way, the descriptions and the links to the Thinkiverse files are in the description down below. Basically start by removing all the wing nuts and then uh, insert the spring bushings, insert the springs again, and then put on all the, the, the knobs um, together with their uh, wing nuts and bring it down as much as you can. In my case, I have, let's say one, two millimeters, basically distance left between the, the bushing and the print bed. That's the, the starting point. Okay, so we'll do the bed lettering now. Um, have a piece of paper ready, just a normal piece of printer paper, and let's go to the printer menu and say prepare and um, auto home, which brings the printer down to its uh, zero position and then we can start leveling. Um, after the printer has gone into its home position, we will turn off the stepper motors. Please don't forget that because you will not be able to move the printer easily uh, otherwise and you might cause some damage to your board. So let's do this. Let's go and say prepare and disable the stabbers. So now we should be able to move everything. Yeah, that makes makes this much, much easier. So after homing, um, let's preheat the heat bed and the nozzle. That's important because you wanna make sure that you have the same conditions when doing the leveling than when printing. So it means if you don't do that, um, everything might change a little bit in the dimensions because heat might cause the heat bed to expand and also to the nozzle to, to expand. And that might cause your leveling to be in inadequate compared to the conditions when you're printing. So let's go to that menu, prepare and say preheat PLA. And that will heat up bed and nozzle. So to start with the leveling process, um, we're going to move the nozzle to the first corner and we're gonna check the distance with this piece of paper. So we put in the paper in between the nozzle and the heat bed and the paper should be grabbed by the nozzle and the heat bed and you should be able to feel the vibrations and it should be movable, I'd say. It'd still be movable with low force. So we can do this in the first corner and if we feel, okay, we need to adjust a little bit, these um, new knobs make it much, much easier now. So just remember that turning the knob, if you look down from the top, if you turn it clockwise, that means you are bringing the heat bed closer to the nozzle. And if you turn it counterclockwise, you will get more distance. So we turn a little bit more counterclockwise now to get more distance and I can feel it. Okay, now the paper moves very, very easily. And if I wanna get it closer again, I just turn the knob again, just a little bit. And then I can feel the paper resistance more and more. So that's basically what you wanna do. And this you're doing, as I've said, for all four of the corners. And now let's start a test sprint and see how we can do these micro adjustments easily with these new big knobs during the first layer of printing. 
So to test out a first layer print, I have put a link in the description down below to a test file that you can try out. This test file basically um, has only one layer and you can uh, watch it print and then make your adjustment. It goes through all of the corners, so we'll see how that works. So as we watch the first layer printing, we can see, okay, is there enough distance or is it too close? Um, this looks pretty fine. Um, we'll see in the other corners how well I did the adjustments in the first place and I have a feeling, okay, maybe I need to go closer to the bed or um, have a little bit more distance. I can easily turn on the fly and that's the cool thing. You can just go now during the print and just grab the wheel. So instead of having to turn the wing nut or using a screwdriver, um, this is much more easier. And here you can see, I have a feeling that this corner actually needs a little bit more pressure. So I'm turning it clockwise just a bit. And let's see how that changes the result. So the test print is finished and we can already see that we have a pretty good result. So I'm going to show you all the corners. So let's, let's have a look at the corners. Um, this one looks good. This is the, the front right. This is the front back corner. This looks also pretty nice. Um, this is the front left. That doesn't look very good. So what could be the reason if you see that the middle, for example, looks fine and the corners look sort of squeezed out. That could mean that you already have too much pressure. You might have leveled all the four corners perfectly, but you still have sort of a curve in your heat bed and that cannot be solved by the manual uh, leveling. So there is a trick, um, basically it's a software feature that's called mesh bed leveling that can help you fix these kinds of problems, but that's a part um, that we're gonna cover in the next video. So let's finish our analysis here. For example, you can see that sometimes in the middle of these squares, you will see some sort of a bubble effect. Um, so it might look a little bit lighter than the rest. That means it's, it's probably having the right sort of pressure, but there, you could go a little bit closer. If you look over again at the left front corner, that has a lot of pressure, obviously. So um, the material is already a little bit squeezed here and um, the middle looks fine, but that could also be a little bit too close. So you have to find a sweet spot. Basically, you want something to stick well in the first place, but you do definitely don't want to squeeze and you don't want scratches. Um, when the nozzle moves around the corners, you might see that, for example, here, it's just slightly visible. There's a little bit of a scratch here, and that means the nozzle is already pretty close to the surface and it's already just slightly scratching the paper. And that might be an indication that this corner, for example, is a little bit too close to the nozzle. So you might have to go down a little bit. So this is also a good indication. And that's probably just working with the paper surface. Other surfaces might be problematic. Glass surface, for example, that is sort of bad and dangerous. And um, there's also these uh, build tech surfaces which do not forgive that kind of um, pressure so well. So be careful to bring the nozzle too close. Let's, let's say this is pretty well aligned. We can do some micro adjustments now, do the print again. Um, if we take off these parts, um, we will also check whether they come apart. So if the outer corners come apart, that's fine, but we wanna check out the surface of, this, of the square. Um, and that looks really, really nice and really, really soft. So there's no roughness here. There's really soft surface. So that's actually a pretty nice result. And that's what you're looking for. So that's it for this video. I hope you liked it and get something out of it. Um, all the links to the parts and also the test surface um, are in the description down below. So check it out. Please subscribe to my channel if you like to get notified about new videos and check out my other videos as well. Bye bye, have a good week.